So a question from Vic Perry for the panel. Um, and uh, this is, uh, I think, a question that anticipates being a gay man, but uh, Steph, you might be able to adapt it on the fly. Um, <laughs> have you ever been told by a gay guy, oh, you're really gay, but you just don't want to admit it, um, implying that you have internalised homophobia? If yes, how did that make you feel? What did it make you feel about gay men? So, yeah, I've definitely got this question from um, gay men, not solely gay men, from straight people, of course, as well. Um, makes you feel a bit shit, makes you feel not really sure what you're supposed to be. Um, you know, it makes you question your entire existence, but also mad yeah. at the same time, because if you do know what you are, and like, God, why can't they just see me for what I am? You know, yeah. this constant battle with people to just be seen as bisexual. But yep. Constantly fighting yeah. that battle. That makes sense. Um, um, Stephen Spencer, do people ever say that you're actually just a gay man and it's internalised homophobia that prevents you admitting that? Well, it's sort of, um, there's that, it, this is based in that myth that uh, being bi is a, is a stepping stone to being gay. Yeah. Um, and that's a complete myth. That is 100% myth. Being bisexual is the destination. Um, being bisexual is a valid sexuality. And in fact, we make up the largest portion of the LGBTIQ plus community, making up at least 60% of the queer community. So we're very much here and we very much exist. Yeah. Um, but this is this is based on that idea that it's a stepping stone. And sort of I look at, I can look at my own experience. I'm like, well, you know, I came out as gay at a very young age. Um, mm. And uh, and now I have, have an, I'm openly expressing my bisexuality and am bisexual. Um, and this isn't a stepping stone. And people people do tend to accept that based on my experience. But then that the logic extends. Are you saying that I'm stepping on stepping on a stone of bisexuality to being straight? I mean, no. Uh, <laughs> got a green mullet. I, you know, I watch Drag Race. I'm I'm not ste <laughs> not on a stepping stone to being straight by <laughs> any means. But um, you know, it I, I do get a lot. Um, say I'll use World Pride as an example, where you know I was very openly being very bisexual. You know, read. Um, you know, being, a bit, you know, openly expressing myself with people of all genders. And it's it's actually, you know, people that I've even known for years, you know, I'll be hooking up with a woman and then they'll actually realise, oh, you actually are bi. And I actually, I go, yes, I actually am bi. So even if they're mm. fully accepting of you, it, it, it almost, they, they almost need proof. Um, and I never want to buy into that because we don't owe anyone any explanation or any proof. But um, it, it is, it, it's it's quite incredible that that sort of, follow, that, that sort of, carries through and I see in the question that um um that Vic has mentioned that that they had heard about these comments in the early 80s and if we look at um statistics around um bisexuality uh, every generation the number of people identifying as bisexual doubles so um yeah and the, and the um currently uh so there's a there's a Gallup poll in the United States that came out which is sort of a good touchstone um for the research that we look at um it's currently the number of bisexual people um, being open from Gen Z, uh, from uh, millennials just to Gen Z, went from 7% up to 13% of all American yeah. adults. Um, it, it's, it's actually quite incredible that the, that the numbers uh, are increasing so much. And that just shows that society is changing. So in older generations, there's a lot of biphobia, but the kids the kids have got it. The future yeah. is looking very bisexual. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, and we, we need to catch up with that. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Steph, do people ever ask you if being queer is because you are afraid to admit to being one or the other? Um, I mean, I've had people in the past kind of like jump the gun due to being uneducated, I guess. You know, I've mm. I've had more of a relation of stigma when it comes to the labelling kind of side of things, I guess, where yep. I can kind of relate with that. Um, going from my own mum, because a lot of, you know, my family do identify as gay. And I've even heard from gay people in my family that are gay, but also homophobic to others, you know? Yep. So it's it's interesting, the contrast that you can see with different genders and how you identify and how it makes you feel on the inside, I think. But that's that's really all I can really say, I guess, in, in my kind of experience with it. But, you know, it, internally, I did struggle with it for a long time. But in the fact that I'm out, I'm proud and I'm not going to let anyone step on my toes. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Steph.
All mm -hmm. right, question from Joel Murray for the panel. Um, what is the impact on you of community comments when we have digital campaigns promoting diversity of relationships across our communities? So Joel was thinking of a campaign with two non-binary people where a lot of gay men gave negative feedback on Facebook posts and so on, assuming the couple were heterosexual based on their apparent gender expression. Um, what work needs to be done to dismantle these perspectives? Um, Steph, since we finished with you last, and yeah. since I know I know you've been in a campaign quite recently yourself, yeah. mm -hmm. um, what impact do those negative comments have on you? Honestly, I haven't experienced a lot of digital uh, negativity when it comes to the advocacy that I post on my social medias or ones oh. that I have seen because I have specifically surrounded myself uh, with safe people that I feel comfortable with. It took me a long time yeah. to get there. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I've still had hate from, you know, professionals, medical professionals, tattooists, you name it. Like it's, it's all there, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I've learned to adapt in my own way through the community that I am a part of. Um, but at th the takeaway from this is it needs to be dismantled in general there are no labels for, you know, HIV. There are no labels for campaigns and pictures. And it isn't a gay disease when it comes to HIV. Like that there is just such an outdated thing. And it's not a thing in general. You know, yeah. it just, it needs to be dismantled altogether. And that's, yeah. I guess, my opinion. That's great. Um, Stephen, um, <clears throat> do you see those negative comments on campaigns? How do they make you feel? Um, well, look, I don't, I don't really have that much to do with my social media um, okay. in these campaigns so far, so I haven't experienced that per se. Um, but I do understand what you're saying, and I just think you know, in this day, day and age, you can't like everyone's so different. You can't just jump to conclusions and okay. you know put people in boxes and yeah. assume that they are this or that or the other. You know, yeah. everyone needs to just take a step back and relax. Like we're all here expressing ourselves and ask before judging. Yeah. Excellent advice. Thank you. And Stephen Spencer, um, do you see those negative comments on campaigns? You you have quite a strong social media profile. How does that kind of negativity affect you? Well, the number one tip is don't read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I, 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 I don't read the comments because uh, I know that there'll be bad stuff. But you, mm. you know, you when you're when you're doing these you can't let that scare you off running these campaigns because they're so important and yeah. and you know we're, what we're doing here in these sorts of campaigns yes we've got a direct health message yes we're we're we're, we're tackling a particular issue but at the same time by a simple act of having two non-binary people in a campaign or say i was involved in an mpox campaign where they asked what what, what does a bi couple look like they they wanted to put a, you know a, a man and a, two men and a woman or um, they were a bit confused about how to actually make it look like. And I said, you know, how about a, a man and a woman? They're, and they're both bi and, and, yep. and, and just representing them in that way. And, and by doing that, by, by, by putting, re reflecting, and it goes back to what I said earlier, by reflecting our communities in our campaigns and our services and our policy, our programs, mm -hmm. um, we're actually changing society at the same time. We're changing the community yeah. because it is a bigger issue than what we're tackling in the campaign. But we're actually, you know, sexual health, and HIV campaigns have such power to be able to influence how our community um, behaves, treats each other, sees itself. Yeah. Um, and that's a great responsibility. And, and so it definitely shouldn't scare us off from doing these things. Um, it, it should mean that we protect the people who are involved in the campaigns, protect the communities yeah. that might be affected in these campaigns, um, delete bad comments, um, and also fact check people, fact check people, yeah. um, you know, and, and don't shy away from it. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. I just also want to add on to what just Steve said as well. I've I've mm. recently taken on my own motto of people see controversy and they run from it. But when I think when it comes to campaigns and what we do as advocates, it's something that we do need to tackle because obviously people see controversy and they run. You know, whereas yeah. we're the people that do want to stand up and do want to represent, whether it be visually or, you know, online or whatever it may be. But it's I I just really sympathize with what you're saying with that because it's it's so important and there is this impact and also safety first yes absolutely yeah. i think there's a real important role for allies here to 
learn first of all and listen but yeah. then also when we see that kind of behavior uh, in the comment thread to jump on it um, not to leave it up to the by folk in our lives to yeah. kind of tackle it um, so Sarah Graham has asked a question about generational differences in biphobia and I think Steve has touched on this already around the Gallup poll results um, but Sarah also had a question for the panel if you had top three asks of community-based peer-based services what would they be Ooh. yeah is Stephen that Australia Spencer, based Australian based peer-based community-based services like NAPA and its member organizations um, what would your top three asks be um, so when we look at peer-based services have them actually be peer-based um, if you're running a, a <laughs> Yeah, um, simple but true. It's, it's <laughs> pretty simple, you know. If you're if you're running a workshop for gay and bisexual men, and, and you say that there are going to be gay and bisexual men running, and I ask, you know, who are the you know, oh, you've got bisexual men, you know, that's really exciting, and you find out that they've only got gay men. That's that's okay. it's disappointing because that's you're not delivering peer based services. Um, yeah. You're not, and um, and so that that would that would be going back to basics. Um, you know, we understand the the principles of um, um, greater involvement of, of of affected populations yeah. actually involve actually involve us. You know, we yeah. we understand these things. Um, we understand that it'd be inappropriate for for men to run workshops for women. We understand that it'd be inappropriate for cisgender people to act as peers for transgender people. Um, so, bi people really need other bi people. Um, yeah. and, and we need our allies as well. Um, you know, we don't live in a perfect world. We don't have, uh, you know, hundreds of bi plus people in the sector to be able to reach out to, but help us build that capacity would be another top three. Um, so, you yeah. know, have actually be peer-based, um, build the capacity of our community. Um, and I think the third one would, um, you know, I, I'd, I'd ask you to, to look at what your community service does of what your community-based peer-based service mm -hmm. does um, and wherever you 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 encounter bi plus people make sure you understand the basics understand what yeah. biphobia is understand where we meet how we communicate where we have sex how we have sex who we have sex with um, mm. and 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 then we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere. yeah great thank you um Stephen when we spoke on the phone you mentioned that your local sexual health clinic has a social worker and that's really it um yeah. would you like to see peer-based services made available in Wollongong yeah absolutely I think it'd be really really beneficial for the community and myself included um it's one of those things also we touched on it before where you know there are these um gay workshops available and sure we're welcome in there but mm. we don't feel like we actually belong in those spaces so yeah. If we can expand those services to better benefit the bisexual community, that'd be, that'd be amazing. Yeah, cool. Um, awesome. Thanks. Um, and Steph, uh, yeah. you, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you mentioned earlier that you're running a workshop with Positive Women Victoria yes. on gender and sexuality. Um, yeah. what, are the, what are the opportunities here? I guess we're still sort of fleshing out what we want to do, but you know with positive women it can be a bit tricky because it's those who identify as women um but i guess i personally as vice chair want to get to a point of really opening up the diversity of how we identify not just as women but you know having that because we are the only australia women base when it comes to hiv you know mm -hmm. and as great as that is and and what a title that can be it also needs to change you know yeah. and i think having more diversity when it comes to our identity and organizations no matter where you live in Australia is such an important thing because that's things that have saved my life you know after my diagnosis and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that um and speaking of that as well Thorn Harbour Health were really amazing to me they offered you know not even just peer support but when it comes to all kinds of things like with my diagnosis I had a lot of domestic abuse I had a lot of trauma they had peer support they had financial help there were a lot of things that 
opened up not just for you know peer support or talking about HIV but they've got so much there that has been life-saving for me and really getting back on my feet after my diagnosis so I guess that's one of that I would kind of suggest for people as well I'm not sure how broad they go with Australia um, because they are Melbourne based but I would highly recommend Thorn Harbour Health um, Positive Living Victoria as well they are very gender diverse which are really Mm. amazing Um, and yeah you know once I know more about the uh, workshop I'll be doing I'm hopefully gonna send some stuff your way (laughs) fantastic we look forward to promoting it listen uh, hearty thanks to the panel today it's been such an in-depth and generous discussion I really appreciate your courage and generosity in sharing with us Um, So thank you again to Steve Spencer, who did so much to help us organise this event. Um, Thanks to our friends at Bobby Goldsmith Foundation, Life New South Wales and ACON for helping to promote the event. Um, And thank you as well to our panellists, Stephen and Steph, 